Ok. Uh, uh, I think we are live now. Yes. Um, good evening, everyone. Um, we are live. I need some minutes to quickly run through that. So. So can you guys check for me if um, you're live on YouTube and you can see from your... Let me know if you have anyone nice live on YouTube right now. Of awesome, awesome, awesome. Yes, that's fine. Oh, oh, oh. That's awesome, awesome. Okay. Yes. Um. Good evening, everyone, and um, welcome to another interesting session. Please don't say that we are live. Yes. Um. I have a couple of um. We are live. We are live. Updates from here. So, thank you, everyone. And um, welcome to this session once again. Um, this is the second um, live webinar that we are going to be hosting at um, Leader Mentor for interested applicants um, who wants to go for a, a scholarship study for their master's degree program and um, a PhD option as an HND holder. <clears throat> the first session was a general session that had um, I think um, three major scholars and, of course, the founder of um, Linear Mentor, Mr. Sheriff Lamiri, and myself. And this is um, uh, like an advanced, an advancement of that session, or let's say a follow-up on that session, where we are going to be doing a DIY... Um, oh, <laughs> we've not even started. Someone is already asking questions. Is already asking question. Is here in my... <laughs> So please take a chill pill. So we are getting to that part. So every every questions that you guys have, we'll get to that part. So please take it easy for us. Take it easy for us. So on today's session,
Okay, guys. Um, apologies for that um, breaking transmission. Uh, let's work. Um, I had issues around um, YouTube Live. Can you guys hear me now? I believe that people should be able to hear me live now. Am I? So, hi guys, can you guys hear me now? Apologies, there's been serious um, network, battling serious network issues here. Can you hear me now? Please, if you can hear me, just um, shoot in the comment section. Let me know if you can, if you guys can hear me so we can get back and start. Um, All right, so I'm bringing the speakers in now so that should it be that my network times out, one of them can start <laughs> can start the session and then we'll be able to see so there won't be any um, delay whatsoever going forward. So, yes. Thank you very much. I, I believe you guys can hear me. And um, for the mention in the, in the introduction, this is like um, a follow-up session to our prior session that we I, that was. Here. Yeah. Where we have um. Going to be kickstarted. We have running a demo today that shows us how to uh, our application live. So <clears throat> while we are trying to do that, we are going to have Miss Sherry Flamidi.
Even with the blurry background, can, hello, can you see me? Can you hear me? Hi guys, possibly to see how much of um, how much of the session we can we can fit in and salvage. So, uh, Mr. Sheriff is experiencing similar challenges in terms of connectivity right now. So, making the whole experience quite um, quite uninteresting. So, I believe that in the moment we should have Mr. Sheriff back. So, he's wanting to. Join to again. Um, I believe that who can hear me now. This can you signify? Can hear me right now. Apologies for asking you guys to signify almost every time. Yes, in house guys, can you please um just um I am the can you drop me a chat, a private chat to let me know if you guys can hear me. Oh no studio. Well from the guys that are not on the studio, I believe you can hear me from YouTube. Oh okay. Thank you. That's interesting. You guys can hear me. So um, let's let um, anybody that is having network connectivity issues amongst the speakers to please um, maybe go off the video for now. So when you want to speak, we are going to bring you back into the session with a video. So um, quickly, <clears throat> as I've mentioned, so today's session we are expecting Mr. Sheriff to kickstart, but uh, unfortunately, we are both having network issues. Oh, Nigeria challenge, some of the challenges we have here. So, uh, I'm introduced to this session and also helping us to know and develop uh, our research interests for those who have, um, who, who, have an, who have a research interest. And for those who don't even have anything that they already have uh, as research interest and they want to pursue a graduate program, um, scholarship in the US, Canada, Europe. So um, some of the things that is going to be interesting us to will help us understand how to find our supervisors, find schools that have program, and um, those program and how can this program can uh, be used to um, resonate with our career interests, our pursuits, and a, uh, a number of that. So while we are waiting for Mr. Sheriff to get on board, I'll move on to uh, Mr. Olojo, Barak Olojo. To quickly um, take us through how to plan application documents, in, um, application dates, and their deadlines. As we all know, application, just like every other endeavor, has um, certain parameters that need to be met. How can we make the most out of these parameters, and how can we ensure that the documents that we are putting forth are the things that will get us through the door 
and get us that much needed um, scholarship. So this is what Mr. Mbarak Oloja is going to be Hello, um, good day, everyone. Uh, so I'll be talking on, you know, important dates and how to go about your, you know, application, how to start, um, how to kickstart the whole thing, you know, getting your documents and everything ready. So basically, um, the very the first scholarship thing, program. So basically, the very first thing you need to do is just, you know, get your document ready. By getting your document ready, um, your transcript and your CV. If you get your transcript and your CV ready, yeah, that is how you can start the whole thing. Um, by getting your document, uh, your transcript and CV ready, you can start by preparing a code email. That is when you search for your school for schools that you intend to, you know, apply to. You've already gone through the schools. You've seen that they have your program that you are interested in. They have the research area that you, you actually want to do or pursue for your PhD or master's program. So uh, that is when, you, from there, can identify the professors for um, for each schools. Pick out those that actually and uh, where their research interest aligns with yours. That is when you you know you can now say okay. Let me prepare a code email for this um, particular professor so that uh, you know I can code email the professor. Uh, preparing your code email is is something that is very very crucial because that is an email that you know captivates the interest of the professor. When you send the code email, it's whatever the code email entails is what we you know move the professor and make sure the professor is you know interested in you then another thing to to you know to look for is we we can also um take a look at schools that you intend to apply to their graduate fair and you know send emails to graduate coordinator telling them you are willing to apply to their schools and if they can you know give you application fee waivers so you can you know have ways to get around the application fee because most application fee cost fifty dollars, sixty, seventy, or up to hundred dollars, depending on the type of schools you are applying to. But most schools um, give free waivers through graduate fair and you know virtual fair also. So all this thing or sending emails to graduate coordinator, you can always get your free waiver from there and. Which can you know give you a, a good start to start the application of the school. So uh, another thing to to be really really uh, important about uh, talk about is the date and application deadline. So this date and application deadline um, is very crucial for you to note them while applying. So uh, depending on the schools you are applying to depending on you know, your department you are applying to and depending on the session you are applying to there are different dates and deadline for each application cycle so uh, we, i think we have summer fall and spring sessions some schools have um winter but not all schools the, the three cycle is summer fall and spring do most students target for as application cycle because that is when you know most um, openings are available in each lab and you know in in some schools when they have funding so that they can say oh I can take students in for this semester and actually fund them but um, all these things can also happen in spring and summers too but the, the large bulk of it happens in fall. And for fall application cycle, if you want to be considered for funding and you know assistantship, you you are, most schools have their deadline for at least about and you know fifty percent to sixty percent of schools have their deadline coming up by December one, 
December 15 or January 1 or January 15. So those are priority deadlines. That is what they call them. If you want to be considered for admission, uh, for funding or assistantship in the department or the school, the for that set of schools, the priority deadline at you know, that date, which is Gen um, December 1, December 15, January 1, or January 15. Um, some schools also still like have different deadlines, maybe, and you will still be considered for funding or assistantship, depending on the school you are applying to. So it's always very crucial to find this out on the department, on the school website or the department's website. It will be stated today that if you want to be um, considered for assistantship, you need to be able to submit your documents before or on the priority deadline date. And by submitting all these documents, you need to be able to, you know, submit all your recommend recommendations, your transcripts, depending on the document they are requesting for. All these things, you need to prepare them ahead of that priority deadline. So it's like you're working towards something. So you work towards that particular date and, you know, that particular deadline. Because, yeah, your goal is to apply to the school, get admission, and also get an assistantship or some form funding for you to be able to um, progress in your school for the uh, graduate school. Um, then there are some deadline aside from the, the priority deadline, February 15, March 1st, you know, March 15, April 1, April 15. But all these deadline, they might be there depending on the school. You, you, you don't want to apply to school that will consider you for full admission by April 15. <laughs> Definitely, people would have, you know, fill up the space of that funding that is available. Because from what I've observed, most professors, when they're in need of students, they don't always want it to be um, a, like something that would be ethic to find, just, you know, going through a lot of applications and all. They want to see, they, they really wish to see the right candidate at the right time. Okay, um, you send me a cold email. I said, that, yeah, you're very interesting. Yeah, you know, organize a Zoom meeting or a Zoom interview with the person and, you know, have a discussion for about 30 minutes where you, you, you talk about your strengths and the, the professor will also ask you one or two questions regarding your undergraduate or whatever your research interest is. So you, that way, the professor is already, you know, knowing what you are capable of one way or the other. And okay, yeah, this person can actually kickstart a PhD in my lab and you know do some research that we are working on. So you already have because you already have the background knowledge and all. I feel like um, that is for fall, but for summer, for summer, if you want to apply for summer, is usually very few. Most schools don't take classes in summer. So it's always uh, or mostly research. If you are coming in, in summer, then basically what you are doing is research. You are coming in just to do research for that summer semester. That, so then you, you start coursework by four. But for a professor to bring you in for you know summer, it shows that oh, there's a research on the ground that you really need to start working on or you need to start getting familiar with so that you can you know kick start everything faster and not to delay but the main coursework would start in four that is where that happened and you can the the application date for summer uh, for summer mostly is always like oct october november around that time because you you, you you're applying ahead um for summer that is before fall comes in that is when you you start applying for summer almost the same application cycle with spring if you are applying for spring and or summer they they, they only state it there in some schools for their application so and this they, they have priority deadlines too some some schools are september 1 some, some schools are september 30 uh most schools are october 1 like you, you can't, most schools don't even accept application for summer or spring 
after October 15 because you they will need to decide on your application. They will need to see if you are going to need funding or not. If there is funding available, they give you funding then before the whole process of you getting your visa interview and all. It takes a lot of time and some schools don't even issue um, I-20 after some date. They'll tell you because we can't issue you I-20 now because we know that it's very, very hard for you to get um, a visa interview date and you know ultimately come to the US, you won't be able to meet up. So that is why even these schools um, are using these priority application deadlines so that when you get the deadline, when you meet the deadline, you can easily decide on your admission faster than if you are in need of funding and we have the funding, we can give it to you. Then that would make sense for you to, you know, there will be a lot of time for you to prepare yourself for the interview and, you know, ultimately get to the US faster without any um, any delay before coming to school. So because they they realize that most students always request for you know, additional time to resume. For example, the, the resumption date might be August 21. But they realize that most students will have to say, oh, my interview date is is you know is still very close or it's still very far. I I can you know meet up with that 20, you know, August 21. Can you can you help me adjust for like two weeks? Then for two weeks I'll be able to do my interview and all. So if you're adjusting for two weeks, if the school is even giving you that opportunity, it's, it shows that you are going to miss out on two weeks of you know classes. One way or the other, you're going to mix out on a lot of things. So it's just a way of the school making sure all their students are fine. You are ready before you get into the school. They don't want you to come in and you know start rushing everything one way or the other. So these are the importance of the priority, you know, application deadlines and dates. And um, I don't know if you have started with planning your documents right, then and you know ensuring that your recommenders are ready and prepared that you are you know planning to start an application for the US or UK application cycle, then. Most of them understand this. Just ensure that you keep up with them and you meet up with the priority deadline. And you know, you'll be fine. I think basically that is what um, I need to cover. So if there are any questions uh, regarding that, then you can always drop um, questions in the comment section. So um, for for the other thing, in the absence of no question, um, Zoo. Hi, sorry. Good morning, everybody. So can you signify if you can hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Can you please go ahead? Like. Oh, okay. Um, good morning, everybody. So this morning, I'm going to be walking you through how to apply to schools, uh, um, the different sessions, the different sections in the application process. And also, of course, like the most important thing, how to search for schools, because a lot of people are having issues with that. You see some people come up and like, oh, can you send a list of schools for economics with um, that offers full funding? Yeah, 
some schools don't categorically put it on their website oh we have full funding to give you guys you actually have to make your research some of us are lucky we get connections from people that have applied before saying oh apply to my school they'll give you full funding and some don't so you shouldn't always rely on information and even when they do at times they might not give you like the full information so you'd actually have to go to the school's website reach out to the graduate coordinator make necessary inquiries so the first part of my session is to walk you guys through how to search for schools there are lots of um websites out there there are lots of websites sorry i'm trying to share my screen Okay, so there are lots of websites you can actually go through to search for schools. I mean, when I started my application, one of the first things I did was to type cities in the U.S. that is single engineering. So basically what I did. I mean, I, I was new. I didn't have so many resources. I didn't have a lot of people who would actually guide me through. So this was actually the statement, like the words I put into Google. And then it brought random schools, as you can see. It brought random schools. You have civil engineering universities in the US. And you can always just explore. These are the list of the school. But one particular one that I think is really, really helpful is US News and World Report. It will give you a list of ranking. It will rank your schools in different categories. Top in the US, top in civil engineering, top in engineering, or even top in your research, your particular research area. So you can just come to this website if you're not sure of where to start from. And you can just type in your school, let's say, um, Stanford University. So this is searching by school. If you want to, if you're not, if you already have an idea of the school you want, you can just search by school or you can just search by course, political science, for instance. And then it gives you best political science in the US, what you need to know, colleges offering political science major. These are various subsections that I can actually explore to give you a better insight to the list of schools you can apply to. So after section, you already know, oh, I'm applying to like 15 schools. These are the list of 15 schools. The next thing you would want to do is to go to the particular school's website. For instance, University of Virginia, you can just type it on Google. It brings this whole bunch of stuff, admission rates, the costs, the programs they offer. Of course, it will give you the full program list. And then you can just navigate to their website. Sorry. Okay, so this is the website. And this is typical for most US schools. If you click on even Canadian schools, if you click on their website, this is almost exactly what you see. Of course, the fonts and colors are not the same thing, but these are some of the subsections you see about us, academics, admission, the arts, athletics might not be there, but you will definitely see academics and admission. Those are the two important categories you should always look for. If you're searching through your phone in my come down as a bar so you would actually if you are using your phone or a pad that doesn't have this sort this extent of width you would actually see it in this format and you can just go here click on click here or you can use the search button so you want to first of all start with admission it brings you a list of undergraduate admission undergraduate programs and this 
but most times some schools would actually have undergraduate and graduate programs this is not here so you might probably just come to academics if you don't see it in admissions you probably come to academics and then go to schools or graduate program so let's go to schools and sorry Okay, so you can actually go to graduate studies too. And you have graduate admissions, it was, was in, of course, in admissions is here. And then you have the graduate programs and degrees. I would prefer we go through the graduates degrees first because you would want to see department specific admissions first. Then there would always be a link to the graduate school admission. So there's a difference between departments, school admission, criteria and the graduate school admission criteria like in nigeria for instance we have um college of engineering like let's say for instance last week you have college of engineering college of arts and sciences so in the u.s every college and department is independent i i zone apologies um your screen is not interactive what we can see from your screen is um best site for this will be personal statement Oh, wow. Sorry. What you have been discussing so far, there has been a lot of gap. So I think you need to go back. Oh, wow. And, uh, sorry. So I'll just probably go back. Yeah. Yes. Uh, sorry. And please follow follow through the comments on the um, YouTube too, so I can, so you can, you can know what issues are people having. Okay. I'm really sorry for that. I did not know. I guess there's something yeah. wrong here. Um, so after, like I said, after going through the list of schools in the U.S., getting the, um, the list of schools you want to apply to, you think you apply to, and also there are categories of schools in the U.S. You have rich schools, you have um, schools that would definitely give you admission. Yeah, I, I forgot what it's called. And then you have schools that of 50% chance of giving you admission. Now, for your rich schools, rich schools are schools like MIT, Johns Hopkins, Stanford, Carnegie Mellon, and then schools that would probably have like a 40% chance of giving you admission. You have University of Virginia, University of Michigan, Case Western Reserve University, and then schools that would probably give you, they would definitely give you admission even without funding. Uh, schools like Southern Illinois University, Western Illinois University, um, West Virginia University. So you should always categorize your schools. Don't put all your eggs in one basket and apply for rich schools. Apply for safety schools. Safety schools are like your backup schools that, oh, if these rich schools don't give me admission, if MIT doesn't give me admission, target schools will give me, okay, yeah, target safety and rich schools. Target schools are schools that, okay, if MIT doesn't give me admission, I know that University of Virginia would give me admission. Even in some in, in some courses, University of Virginia is even a rich school. So the school's acceptance rates can be like, let's say 30%, like my school, but the department acceptance rates can be like 10%. My department acceptance rate is 10%. So sometimes when you check the school's acceptance rates, you, you would also want to check the department acceptance rates. It also differs. So apply to have a, a group of schools for target schools. Please, you guys are allowed to dream big. So you can apply to Stanford and MIT. I got into Stanford of of course, they didn't give me funding, but so you can apply to top schools, um, target schools. Just target schools are like 50 50 or 60 40, 60 40. They will give me admission, and then to safety schools, just something for you to fall back on if these two categories don't work out. So, afterwards, I'm picking the demo I'm going to walk through is using the University of Virginia. Let's say University of Virginia is one of the schools I'm applying to. I'll just type on Google University of Virginia. And go straight to their website, which is usually here. And if you're using your phone, I don't know how it works on phone. I don't really use my phone. But you will definitely see the website icon there.
and then you can the most important this is like an interface for most schools in the us you would always see subsections like this about us academics admissions etc but the most important to you is academics and admission that is always that is a subsection you should always focus on so you can go to admissions or academics either way you can work both ways and your for admission you can come you'd always see undergraduate admission in some places and graduate admission they are two different things they can be together and they can be separate but since it's not here i'll you go to academics if it's not in a, if you don't see your graduate admission in admission subsection just come to academics and then you should definitely see graduate studies so it will lead you to another subsection of the graduate school like i said the graduate schools are independent they have their own admission criteria for those applying to mechanical engineering they can ask you to submit sop for those applying to civil engineering they might not ask you to submit sop there are some schools that don't ask but there are very few or they can ask you to submit GRE in mechanical and not submit in civil. So they are really independent. And again, the graduate school is like the bigger envelope. And then there are subsections. There's like in graduate school, you have school of engineering, school of sciences, school of arts. So graduate school has their own admission. The graduate school can ask you to submit SOP, personal statement, and GRE while your department asks you not to submit. But you have to you have to fulfill those two criteria to be able to get in. You have to fulfill graduate admission criteria and your department's criteria. So the next thing you want to do is either go through graduate admissions or graduate degree. You can, first of all, get the graduate school's admission criteria before going to your department's admission criteria. So let's go through graduate admission first to see if there's even a chance you can get in. So these are the list of schools that are here. And if you are in, depending on your department, if you are in political science, you go for arts and sciences. If you are in school of medicine, school of law, engineering, for me, engineering. So just... So this is the... This is where you can get a whole list of information about your faculty, basically. So these are options that are available to you. You would always see in every graduate admissions website, you would always see graduate admissions, future undergrads, everything that is of importance to you. These are the list of programs that they offer. So you can check the admissions first. And they are they have waiving their GRE and application fee for 2024 admission. So for those of you that are interested in applying, they would always just give you every once it's close to admission session, admission period, they would always you would always find information, webinar information, recruitment schedules. These are recruitment schedules that they have in different places. It can be in person and it can also be virtual. So if you're not sure of what you want to do, I mean, you're just here for the first time navigating everything, it's fine. You can come here, check how to apply, cost and aid. If you're not sure of the city, of course, you can get like a view of how Charlottesville is, what are required for international applicants, choosing a degree, online degree. So these are like FAQs. But we can go through the apply, sorry, not apply. Um, yeah, so you can know what type of degree is right for you. If you're just, you're not sure if you want to transition with civil engineering, from civil engineering to another department. And the good thing here is if you're a civil engineering student and your research is not in the school of, um, department of civil engineering, you can actually go to Department of Mechanical Engineering, there are a lot of interdisciplinary works going on around here. So you don't have to really limit yourself to civil engineering. If you're in a school's website and you don't find your research in School of Engineering, you can just move to the 
you can just move to the department of mechanical, see if they have your research program, your research rather. So you can check for the graduate engineering programs for me, civil engineering. Yeah. So once you move to the department, you can always get a preview of the programs they're offering, what the department is about, their faculty. So before you apply and you just want to send code mails, this is really helpful. The, they are like, they are professors here, like are collectively called faculty members. So if it's not here, you can just come to search and then type faculty. It's, it will automatically take you there if you can't find it in the list of options, but it's most times it's usually there. So these are their professors. These are people, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> these are people you can reach out to, send code mails to, to find out more about them. <coughs> sorry. Some just list the faculty name. Sorry. <coughs> Some just list the faculty names. You don't see their research area for some schools. They'll just list a bunch of faculty members, professors, emeritus, and all that. They won't tell you their research. So in that case, if you don't see their research area, just click on their name. It will take you to their profile. Like this one works in traffic operations. You would see his, his LinkedIn page his contacts, his email, and also sometimes, yeah, you would see his research area. So this will give you an insight of what this person is working on and if he's a good fit for you. So of course you would want to send the person a mail. So these, these are really awful, awful source, aside from the ones you see on LinkedIn or in groups where they're sent to you. This is another way you can actually reach out to people. Then I haven't, assuming you've sent out your code mail, they've replied you, they've said, oh yeah, sure, you can apply. You can just come to academics, click on graduate programs, and then you they'll give you a list of information about their graduate program, their MSc, their ME. ME is Masters of Engineering, MS is Masters of Science, and their PhD. They would also inform you about which one, um, like, different criteria for getting in for each one of them assuming you are going in for phd you click on phd and then it should just give you an overview of the research areas that they have transportation structures infrastructure and of course they'll tell you the graduation criteria like okay for you to graduate you have to fulfill 56 54 credit hours that's that six courses 18 dissertation they would always tell you that so and when you can graduate some phd here lasts from five years to from four years to seven years some longer than that so if if your school and another thing you want to do is make sure the school's graduation rate is high. There are some schools they have like ninety percent acceptance rate. Their graduation rate is just thirty percent. It means people don't graduate on time in those schools. So you want to be careful. As much as you want to get into schools, also think about getting out of schools. So you should always look for schools with graduation rate of above 60, 50, 60 upwards, just to be safe. And this is their admission criteria. What you need, what you need to get in, and they'll tell you the funding they have for engineering students, if any. And then, luckily for you, there's engineering school requirements. Sometimes you have to. They'll always provide you with the link to go to the engineering school requirements. They'll tell you, oh for you to also get accepted into the school after fulfilling all our requirements you have to meet the engineering school's requirement and engineering school requirement typically involves exams like gre sat and ielts if you have to write and there are
Thank you. So you can just go through the Office of Graduate Program, School of Engineering Office of Graduate Program, just to get helpful, helpful, um, helpful information concerning your application. And if you want to reach out to the graduate court, assuming the school does not did not put it on their website, oh, we are offering application fee waiver. Another thing you can actually do is reach out to their graduate coordinator. Like it is for, for you to actually have the full experience, I suggest you use a system because with a phone, you start you, you have to start navigating through all the buttons and sometimes it's not convenient. So you can always just reach out to the prefer, um, to the graduate school code. If you are not sure of, oh, I don't think I saw the admission requirements on your website, or I just want to be sure you guys take HND if you don't, or I want to know if I have to reach out to a professor to get funding, like for Johns Hopkins, you don't need to reach out to a professor. They admit you with funding if that's for PhD. And if, if it's with masters, they'll probably give you funding. They did give me funding, but it wasn't full funding. So some schools will categorically spell it out that you don't need to risk and um, reach out. We don't need you to do that. But some, if you're not sure, you can always reach out to the graduate code for if you're having issues with your application, if you need application fee waiver, if you need to be sure that you need to submit GRE or IELTS, or if you feel like it's on their website that I do need to submit IELTS, but I'm from Nigeria, I've been speaking English all my life, I don't necessarily need it. You can also reach out to them. They can waive IELTS for you if, if they feel like, or GRE. Sometimes schools waive GRE for students if you demonstrate exceptional academic So the next stage after all of this is to apply. After you've gotten your application materials ready, like my colleagues, my colleague um, put you through. And also after reaching out, after sending that code email, either you get a response or not, just reach out. Because when I applied to some schools, I did not get, like before I applied, I sent code mails. But I didn't get a response and I still applied. And then it was after I applied, I, I got a response. I don't, I know correlation is not causation, but sometimes you can just get lucky after applying, they reach out to you. And some don't respond because they're probably on the admission committee, <clears throat> like um, University of um, Virginia State University. Sorry, Virginia Tech. The professor said he can't really talk about it because he is because he is actually on the admission committee. So sometimes just reach out. And if you are looking for apply, like I'm looking for, I can't find it. You can just search. Let's see what that brings out. Since I can't find apply on their website, I think I'm just going to go back. Yeah, so you can just go back if you can't find a fly. And the next thing is to just click on your application. So it takes you directly to where you want to apply. It, Tells you a bunch of stuff, and for a first time, ma, this is the first thing you do. You have to first of all create an account using your like your email address, your first name, your last name. I'm actually going to obscure that for um, security purposes. <laughs> Sorry.
so sorry i'm just trying to get i have some pictures of the different section and i'm just trying to get them sorry So, sorry, if I actually get all the requirements I'm looking for, um, when you actually set up your account, it takes you to their application, their online application. It's basically like the normal form you feel, except for the fact that, of course, it's, it's online. So... Okay, sorry. <clears throat> so, I don't know why it's not. I don't know why it's not. Okay, sorry, can you guys see my screen now? Yeah, yes, we can. Okay, sorry for the um the old delay. I was actually looking for this. So I, I'm actually using um an application I started, I used last year because I applied to the school. And if you want to continue your application or start a new application. You actually have to start a new application, but for me, I'll also I'll continue my application and let's see if that works. Oh, uh, okay. I'll start another one. Okay. So this is when you are starting an application, you have to pick like what program you want. Sometimes you have to also pick. Some schools don't specify the like the session, like fall twenty twenty four, spring twenty twenty four. So you have to pick. Of course, if you're applying for fall, pick fall. If you're applying for spring, 
pick spring just make sure you pick the right one and then you navigate to the school you're applying for Miami School of Engineering okay um I hope you can still see my screen because I don't I don't want to start all over yes yes it's visible okay okay so the first these are these are the list of things you have to actually fill the program your personal background military status if you were ever in the military academic history test scores university standards and a whole bunch of supplementary materials so of course you pick the course you are going for civil engineering the degree whatever degree you want phd and like i said the term i'll be applying for fall 2024 and then You're going to pick whatever suits you, your prefix, your gender, and everything. And then your address, your phone number, and all that. So yeah, so this is this is the part where you're going to pick your race and ethnicity. Of course, you are not. We pick black. Your country of residence. The part I'm actually very interested in is acad from academic history. Okay. So for your academic history, if you are if you are a polytechnic student, you would want to combine your HND and ND transcripts together. You don't have to split it. Although some split it, but it leads to confusion and then they send you a mail that they don't really understand what is going on. So have your HND and ND transcripts. Like, if, I know you are going to get it separately. In, in my case, I got it separately. So you can just scan it and then make it into one PDF and upload. I'm going to have to add another institution because. So you add the name. Sometimes your, your school might not be there. So you can, you just. Just have to put it in there. It, it won't give you a list of options. Like Lagos State University is actually there because somebody have applied or people have applied to the school before. So it's registered. And then you pick your country, not really relevant, and all of this. And then you just submit your transcripts. Some schools would actually ask you for your grade. I don't know why it doesn't have it. Your CGPA. It will ask you, okay, what is your CGPA is over what for? Polytechnic students we use over four. So you just put 3.8 over four. Your level of study is undergraduate. Oh, okay. Um, the degree awarded, this is a really tricky part, but just put in bachelor's of science because, because when you evaluate your results, it's going to be equivalent to a bachelor's degree. So you can choose Bachelor's of Engineering or Bachelor of Science, either one that works for you. And if you do have your transcripts evaluate, always attach your HND, ND, and then your evaluated transcripts together, add it into a PDF. Sometimes they don't really need, once you have an evaluated transcript, they don't need the other ones, but just to be on the safe side, include all three of them. And if you don't have evaluation, it's fine. Just put in Bachelor's of Degree. Um, Bachelor of Engineering, the date you were given, let's say in April 2029, and then your major, your major is like here they have for their undergraduate, you can major in civil engineering and then minor in arts and sciences or major in civil engineering and minor in mechanical engineering. So your, your major is civil. And if you, if you are like a person who has, I don't know, like in civil, you can pick options, structural, geo, technical, and just for structural engineering. And your CGPA, let's say, like that? 8 out of 4.0. Well, if it's like 3.84, I'm just going to pick it. Is English your primary <laughs> language? Yes, please. Your award and honor. People leave this this is blank because they're not really sure what to say but if you've ever gotten an award in church if sorry my audience if you've ever gotten an award in church in school 
wherever just put it there it's it, it might not feel academic even if it's not academic just put it there it shows that at one point in time you you actually were in a position and then you got this so you should actually just include everything you can some always ask for class position like out of um class rank like out of 100 what position were you so you, you should always include that so it usually comes a after your GPA or before your GPA. So you can just include that. Upload your transcripts if you are not sure. I can't leave this place. Uh, let's just be in documents. It should not fall your Oh, wow. Okay, and then you continue. So because GRE, GRE is waived for <coughs> for fall 2024, you can just keep it. This these are just a bunch of codes that the school the school asks you to fill. And of course, just make sure you read through them and fill them appropriately because you don't want to pick yes when your answer is supposed to be a no. Um this does not apply to you because it's just for in states people people that are from virginia basically okay and then this is supplemental information information that if you feel can actually aid your uh, application you might want to include it there your your resume or cv and your personal statements so this is actually good. They actually listed out what they want in your personal statements. Some schools don't do that, but most schools will ask you to submit a personal statement. They always give you things they want because it's kind of is 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 kind of different from an SOP. So they will tell you what specific want to write in your personal statement, and then you have I I would suggest you not leave it blank because. Optional statement can really go, can make or break your admission in, in the sense that if your personal statement is limited to like 200 words and you have something more to put out there, something you feel the admission committee should know, your optional statement is really good. You can just squeeze the extra stuff inside. And then faculty of interest. That is why you should really research about the people, the school and research area. Would you want to work with, like after going through their faculty, who are the people that really, really interest you? And of course you have to put it from most to least research. So you can just put in like the people you send your um, code mails to. If you send to code um, to professors, you can just put two. And if you want to list more, that's fine as well. And then your academic and research interest. What research do you want to work on? You can you can have three options. So you can always just pick three options that oh, if this one doesn't pan out, this this would definitely this one would definitely work out. Oh, it's fine by me. Then this is the financial aid. You should also want to read it. They'll ask you, some schools might not really ask you for that. They'll just ask you, oh, do you want to be considered for fellowship or any available funding? Your answer would definitely be yes. But this, this asks for a whole bunch of other questions, which is good, I guess. It asks if you've gotten an NSF grant, if you submitted an NSF grant research fellowship. I think that's usually for citizens here. And your application history. This one is always a no, I guess. Well, except for my case where I've applied before and all that stuff. And your research experience. 
even if you've not conducted like a real research before, I guess, all those lab works that you've been doing, those practical that they'll ask you to write, even if it's just writing, just put it there. As long as you can defend it though, don't put what you cannot defend, but don't leave it blank. You have research experience, even if your your IT period, your CWS period, those are they are, in a way, they are practical experience, so just put it there. The practical work you you did for soil mechanics or something, just put it there. It's research work. And also, like, the number of hours or months you, you've done your research. Your industry experience, your IT is a, is a good one. IT and CWS is a good industry experience. And if you've been out of school for longer, that's also fine. You can include it. But for those who have not been out of school for like up to two years or up to enough time to actually get proper industry experience, you can actually just include it too. And these are additional information, like some schools, like I said, they, there's a whole lot of interdisciplinary work going on in the US. So you can be in civil and, and work with people in physics and mechanical or people in computer. So if you're interested in other programs, it will actually not cost you anything, you would still get your PhD in civil and a PhD in something else, or PhD in civil engineering, major civil, minor on cyber physical systems or something. Then afterwards, you don't actually have to finish all your application in one sitting. If you get overwhelmed or you get tired or, or Nigeria network is just bad, you can just leave it and then come back. Once you continue, it will save. Although some schools are not like that, they will categorically have the save button. <laughs> yes, but of course, it. once you continue, it will definitely, this section is safe, so you won't have to start again. <laughs> and this really good section, recommendation, wow. Um, I know a lot of people like are really, um, wow. have <laughs> the issue of getting people to recommend for them. I spoke with oh, yeah. someone um i'm i'm an ice scholar so like we always have to mentor people after you've gotten the, the fellowship or the scholarship so i was talking with someone and the person said oh um i'm only reaching out to professors because they have higher ranking yeah professors <laughs> are good. if you have access higher to qualifications but if you don't have access to a professor please don't give up on coming to the US to study or don't give up on your academic <laughs> dream. Use a normal lecturer. Like everybody, anybody that can attest I have no recommendations. Aside from, recommendation from for so many people. <laughs> I can't anybody, Even if it's that teach you lab work. As long as <laughs> someone that you've rapport with, somebody that's <laughs> you that can testify that oh this this person is dedicated and hardworking and would really excel in your school because yeah sometimes yeah. it's not the title that matter it's the content of what is in it they don't yeah. look at the title they overlook it it is what the person is writing so you can they, give one they, professor and the professor will write they want, they, the they want the description to be you in real time yeah they, because these people <laughs> are psychological i'm telling you like yeah. they find answers yeah where you don't expect it. They read from yeah. your body language. They read yeah. from the tone of your message yeah. of what you're writing. You might feel that there's no yeah. emotion in writing, yeah. but there are lots of emotions in writing. Yeah. So the tone you're, con yeah. you're conversing with or you're writing really matters. So if you don't have a professor, please look for somebody that can just testify to you. And then you can just add as, I think they have like, you have to add at least three recommenders for phd um is usually here from yeah. yeah so the best the best method of course is through mail don't use any other method it's just going to slow the whole process and if your lecturers do not have um like a school mail or a professional mail if you are using somebody in your office just let them use their personal mail. Yeah, it's, it might take a lot a while because they're going to tell you that, oh, we'll verify this mail to make sure it's actually legit sure, and it's yeah. not somebody. But if, you, if they don't have, yeah, yeah, if they don't have an official mail, like they can use their personal mail. There are some schools I used personal mails for and it worked. So you can always do that. And then the final part is your signature 
and then of course it will ask you to review what you've done so far and tell you if there's any issue like now i said we've detected following errors in your application it will tell you what issues you have in your applications before you finally submit you should just take your time before submitting an application because after submitting there is only little correction you can do so take all but when i say take all the time um, i mean like make sure there's like a month to go before you before they're like a month before the application deadline then you can submit a month so if you start now you can submit in november just to take all your sweet time doing making sure you submit the correct application making sure your recommenders are responding although you can edit your recommended your recommenders after submitting so if somebody's not responding you can always remove them and then add other people so that's that's really fine and another section you can edit afterwards is i think your um your transcripts there sometimes you can always upload your transcript so that's fine. So that's basically everything about the application process, the old right. stage you have to go through. But like <laughs> I said, you should you should start early so you take you take you have enough time to really know what you want to do. And at this stage, I'm pretty sure most people are confident enough with their SOP and their personal statement, and they have a list of recommenders. And they, another thing is don't have three, because they are requesting for three, don't have three recommenders. I have like six, because you might apply to like 18 schools and some people are not so open to writing. Of course, it's going to be copy and paste all over for the 18 schools, but some people do not have the time and you can't really blame them when they say, oh, I don't think I can apply. I can recommend 18, like, different schools up to 18 for you but if you have six you can split them in, you can split the schools into two. Oh, this people go for this this people go for this it really helps you a lot rather than having just like two people recommending for a whole lot of schools and also means responsiveness also from the, the side of the recommenders and if you're still struggling with your sop another thing you can use is ai um chat gpt now i'm not saying you should copy chats like Copy everything that it gives you, but it helps you brainstorm. It's going to like your personal assistant. Yeah, use it as your personal assistant. Of course, your personal assistant just gives you the tits, little, little, little things here and there, and you just make the bigger picture yourself. So you can just ask Chat GPT to, oh, can you write them an SOP for me? I am this, I am that, I have a CGP of this, I've done this, I've done that. And it's a draft something up and then you can read through and, oh, okay, I have an idea of how my SOP should be. I have an idea of the tone. And you can also use, um, I think Avad has, Avad has a material for writing SOP. So you can go through their website and I think Stanford too. This, these are really awful. And of course, don't forget your um, generated AI is like um, Grammarly, QBot that can help you, in, I don't know, paraphrasing. You can see somebody something in somebody's SOP. So instead of copying directly or something, you can just paraphrase, go, you know, refine, fine tune your everything. And I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you. Wow. Wow, thank you so very much, uh, my ice scholar. It has been a very fantastic one from uh, our hand and the earlier uh, presenter to Olojo. Yeah, and I believe uh, everybody trying to navigate through the application paths would really have uh, deep insights. And if you have been applying, I'm quite sure you would have a deeper insight into the application process. So, and I believe you will find this uh, session so interesting and, uh, you know, insightful for to be a, a personal guide towards your application. Yeah, in uh, addition to what she had just said, application process, it's uh, not something you just jump into immediately. You have to, you know, navigate, you have to plan yourself, plan your document, your SOP, your recommenders, you have to reach out to them your academic CV, you prepare them, you take your time and you look for a very good reviewer. 
Then you also need to get information about the school that you want to apply to. That will really, really help you. So, and if you could do that, then you start your application. And the, the, the key takeaway from the session by Ayo is that you don't necessarily need to start and finish up your application in one sitting. Yeah, you can always, you know, start application and uh, come back to here to continue. Most of the school will auto save the application process. So you don't need to, you know, stress yourself so much or burn out yourself so that you can always find it very interesting. So I'm telling you, application process is very, very interesting. And you have to plan it. You have to do your background check. So as at the time of applying, you have all your information, all your PDF documents that have to be uploaded. Then uh, the recommenders are ready and uh, you find it so interesting. And uh, I think we'll go to the question and answer session so that uh, we answer some of your questions. So question. I think we are hoping to receive uh, questions from the listener so that we can attend uh, to your questions. While uh, waiting to accept or answer some of your questions that we would have, I also need to reiterate on this. Maybe I should ask uh, Ayo to tell us more about this. I have uh, experienced uh, many people during the course of their application. Okay, I think I have a question now. Let us look at this. Ayo, what of Sir? those polytechnic students that obtain HND and ND in a, in a different school? You have a question here. Okay. Polytechnic students that obtain their HND and ND in different schools. So how can they oh. upload their transcripts? Okay, Um. like I said, there's really no big deal there. You just... You just um, get your ND transcript from the previous school and, of course, your HND transcript from the other school and just use use a scanner. You can use your phone. I think Cam scanner. You can scan it and then just make it one PDF and that's it. That's just it. There's no issue. But if you... I don't know if you are going to evaluate. It might help. But even if you are not evaluating, there's no issue. They see that, okay, this is for the first two years and this is for the remaining two years. We've seen people who have to, to duplicate um, two separate transcript from two different schools and it worked out fine for them. So there's really no issue there. Okay. That's a very cool one. Um, I'm thinking Adebayo Kazim uh, gets uh, that so clearly. And uh, you know in your academic CV, you would have listed the schools from which you obtain those, uh, let me call diplomas. So it's not a big deal. So just make it a PDF a file. Then by the time they are scrolling through and they make use of your academic CV in line with the transcripts. So it's a very clear information. Also, um, another thing that you might want to do is if you are not um, evaluating, another thing that can help is you can do it separately. Like, if, if those schools are actually taking HND, since they are two different schools, you do ND for, like, upload. Like, you saw when I uploaded mine, it was, you saw last week text wise. So you can do it like that. Uplo upload the first one for your ND and then upload the second one for your HND. Since there are schools that take HND, they will understand you, you, you don't have any problem. You can do it either way. OK, yeah. Let us look at this together, because this has always been a very serious uh, part. Ayo, this is directed to you. I know it's a popular question by many people. Or oh, and uh, insinuations. When you submit your application, 
And the deadline for that application is clearly stated from the school website. Do recommendations or recommenders a deadline? Is it the same to the deadline in which you have to submit your application? Do recommenders do have extended uh, deadline? Hope you get the question. I think you said do recommend. I've gotten this question several years. Yeah. Do they have deadline? Do recommenders? Yeah. The, 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 the deadline for the schools to get the recommendations, the recommendation letters, is it the okay. same with the deadline for the application? Yes, it is. Is that correct? Right? Although, for, yes, can you hear it me? Please. Okay. For most for most schools, yeah, we is. can. It is, but some schools can allow like a window of about okay. two weeks, three weeks. But I would always advise you, like little little things make a candidate stand out, and one of them is meeting application deadline. Submit your application. Make sure you have your recommenders okay. sent your, your recommendation sent in before the application deadline you may feel it's not necessary or this one is not part of the selection criteria but you don't really know what what they would actually use to significant to distinct you out of the other pool of students some some schools tell you oh your recommendation letter can come in a month after two months after but it's not ideal in my own case like it's it doesn't it doesn't really sit well okay Okay, another question is popping up from uh, Chibuzo. Good evening, ma. I have an issue. I have a BSc and HND. I have transcripts for my BSc, but I do not have that of my HND, and the Polytechnic is on strike. However, I have the statement of results. So, how can this person just oppose between a, a BSc and an HND? Can I respond to that? Do you want to respond Hello? to that or should I? Okay, please go on. Go on. Go on. Okay, the first question I want to ask is for the BSc, uh, did, did, did they write, like, I don't know, I didn't do top up or conversion, but on your BSc, did it start from like the, it started from like the third year? The right? Direct entry. In yeah exactly like did, is it direct entry or like did you start from first year with your bsc or you you did like um like a three-year bsc and then you have to attach your hnd results with it if you could respond that would really help but okay let, let's assume you did uh, Chibuza, can you respond to that i think it's on it could okay. okay if if assuming you did do direct entry and your BSc transcript starts from like the third year, you can't use, you can't really use it because they want to see from the first two years, but you can still start your application, still start. I mean, there are cases where people start, people that are graduating next year, like next year, July, start use their um, transcripts. It's called I've forgotten what it's called, but you can actually use your transcript and then update it after you've been given admission. So you could actually just try your luck, pending when your HND transcript yeah. comes in. Okay. In addition to that, what uh, the my scholar is trying to explain is that when you talk about transcripts, uh, the admission committee, they are trying to look at the cost by cost details of all what you have done during your undergrad they are particularly about the, the details of all courses and uh, if you have a, your, your bsc and you are starting from the third year you can imagine a number of courses that would not be included i'm sure that will be about almost 40 courses that'll be out of that transcript for year one and year two i think year one you'll be running about 20 something courses in year two you'll be running about another 20 something that's like 50 courses that even the research areas that you want to you know join or the professor you want to join might particularly be interested in some subjects or in some courses that will be missing from your bsc transcript so that will not be a, that will be a negative on your part in fact using your hnd transcripts might even be better than using that bsc 
that might not be complete. So in this case, your HND will be your strengths. But as she has said, you can start your application and uh, upload the BSC later if you are sure to come out before the deadline. Is West evaluation compulsory? West evaluation. Well, I know you can go on with that. <laughs> that question is, uh, is it compulsory? Okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll share I'm a little sure, bit of. I'm sure the answer is clear. I'll, I'll share a little bit of my um, own experience. So when I initially applied to okay. schools, I did not evaluate my transcript. And I applied to, I think, about 15 schools. <laughs> yeah. It's not LD, but I did. You got several admissions without West. <laughs> yes, I did. I got admission. I got admission to Stanford without West. I got to John's so, so Carnegie Mellon. Carnegie Mellon without West. I got Carnegie into Mellon and yes, without West, but the graduates department. About six schools. Because, because in those other schools, the, Are the dying minutes. <laughs> yeah. The, the other schools, they are, they are so, the department is really, really independent. So the, the thing is, it is not compulsory, but it gives you a broader chance. That's just the honest truth. If you evaluate to, because yeah, I didn't evaluate truth, on yeah. time, I applied to just 15 schools. I could have applied for more, yeah, but it was still limited. There are over 300 schools in the US, over 300 schools. So if you have your West evaluation, you can apply to some like with categorically that they need West. Schools, 20 top schools. Some will tell you that no, you don't have to worry. We have in-house evaluation, like those other schools I mentioned. Some don't have. They would they would want you to evaluate themselves. It's being lazy actually, but they will want you to evaluate themselves <laughs> and yourself. So if you don't have, it's fine. You can get into schools with full funding, I assure you. And if you do have, good for you. You have yeah, lots sure. of opportunity. So either way, you'll still get into school with funding. So you don't have to worry. So in a nutshell, if you can, do your worst evaluation. If you know you cannot afford it, there is always a way out. It's not compulsory. And uh, your application will be tailored towards schools that specifically do will not even ask for ways just search is the power of search conduct your background check and see the schools you can apply to okay what can i do in case when you send a graduate coordinator a mail regarding application season from spring to winter season i am not getting feedback wow okay uh let me respond to this when you send uh, code email to graduate code and you are not getting response you may wait a while maybe after another two weeks and send a reminder and let your reminder be in line with the earlier trade don't send a fresh email send in line with that trade so that it will see that oh you've sent a message earlier then at the same time in our last uh, webinar there was a clear point that we raised any time in my last video for you to send code email to graduate coordinator or professors please check through the website very very well and see there are some information that are clear on the website you don't you don't ask such questions from graduate school that's one of the number one reason why they will not uh, respond to your email because they just feel uh, you are coming to graduate school and this information is categorically spelled out on our website and you are still asking you are being lazy and you are not a research oriented person that's just the meaning so if you see that your response is not being uh, answered and you 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 know do a follow-up uh, email maybe after two weeks you always wait for like two to three weeks and no response is gotten check your email very well and check what you are asking there might be something wrong somewhere so Ayo, do you have any addition to that oh She's offline. No, I'm actually not. I don't want things to come in. That's why. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see the previous question. What, what if you have? Okay, the previous question. Oh, the the question was if you send a code email to graduate yeah. code 
the graduate mm -hmm. coordinator and you about the application season and the likes and you got no response so that what can you do okay i i think we're mixing something up cold email is is like it is a jargon in the admission process that that basically implies <laughs> reaching out to a professor of your choice that interests you professor, in regards to yeah. research yeah. that you want to work with so when okay so like the the uh application season like what questions are you asking that, like you said it's it's really matters what question you're asking some of these okay. people are just nasty they're nasty okay. no no like yeah, they won't. They won't respond to you because they, they are nasty. Sense. Yeah, they are nasty. Some of the them person is nasty. asking about spring or winter season, which will be clearly seen on the website. They won't answer. Okay, if so the thing is on the website, the person is clearly seen on the website. They just season. look at. They don't have winter season. season. I don't. Yeah, it's rare. Even at um, it's only one school I've spring seen. Spring or winter. Yeah. yeah, it's spring, summer, fall. Majorly, have spring and fall. Yeah, majorly and spring fall. and fall. So it depends on the question you're asking again. And make sure the email address is actually delivering. Sometimes it might not deliver at their own end. If 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 you're sure it's delivering, reach out to someone else. You can reach out to, aside from the program coordinator, they you can reach out to the um the they, they have another director that you can always reach out to. Yeah. If not the department, I can reach out to the graduate school. It, it always helps. You, like the, they will, if you cannot answer yeah. your question, they will refer you or copy like the someone who yeah. in a mail. Yeah. So yeah. Respond. Okay. I think uh, we'll take uh, two to three more questions then. Yeah. Is there any harm? in applying to grad schools without first contacting the grad coordinator about your interests? Obviously, no. <laughs> but some school, we want you to contact. Uh, no, contacting grad, grad school coordinator is not necessary. I think we are mixed. Some things are being mixed. Ayo? Hello? I can hear you, sir. When we talk about maybe we should just do this we have to explain reaching out to graduate school coordinator reaching out to professor you were explaining the other time maybe we should explain all this in details why do you need to reach out to graduate school for the coordinator what are the specific questions you can ask why reaching out to a professor what are the type of questions you can ask him so because this question okay. if you, if you yeah, it very well, really... is there any harm applying to grad schools without uh, so like i said schools differ. so what can you how can you put this schools differ and as schools differ so do departments differ in the sense that for like i said for johns hopkins they categorically stated it in their websites please do not reach out to professors you don't need to if you are if we're admitting you for the phd you are fully funded if we're admitting you to the masters we might offer you some sort of funding so sometimes they will categorically state it in their websites but in cases where they don't reach and you're not sure of what to do reach out to the graduate court or any professor they would if they can't answer your question they will always refer you to somebody who can that's the nice thing about them so reach out to anybody the graduate code if it's not responding reach out to the graduate school reach out to a professor there even if it's undergraduate code it will tell you oh i'm not responsible for graduate but i'll refer you to somebody who can answer your question there would always be this line of this chain of communication yeah. that would lead to the right person so in case you don't see it on their website it means you, you most likely it means you would have to get you have to write the code mail get the professor especially if it is phd and it is a science oriented like if it is engineering most times you would need an advisor and and also for the graduate code the questions you want to be asking the graduate code is oh 
um, I'm from Nigeria. Do I need to write IELTS? Or uh, I'm, I'm from Nigeria. Yeah. Can I get yeah. um, application fee waiver? Are there webinars I can attend that I can get application fee waiver? waiver. <laughs> do I need a pro do I need to yeah. have an advisor yeah. before applying to get funding? Or can I just automatically before get funding? Applying. Those are questions. And you want to have already started asking those questions by now. By this time of the of the application um session, you you already want to have started the asking those questions. Day. Switching now, yes. At this point, you've already asked, "Can I get waiver?" If not, okay. How do I get waiver from from the department or from graduate school? If I can't, do I have to reach out to professors to get funding? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that uh, elaborate uh, response. That question. So after this question, we take two more. Then uh, we call it the end of the session. Can I switch course? Like I had a chemical, you... chemical engineering and I apply for biotechnology of course. <laughs> okay, yes, ahead, you, you can. You okay. definitely can. Like I said, here there is a whole <laughs> lot of interdisciplinary work. Like I'm. Um, I'm in civil mm -hmm, and I work with somebody lot. in electrical, computer, and mechanical. Like my old lab, my lab works with people from physics, chemical, mechanical, computer, electrical. So you can switch as long as you're, you have a research that you're interested in and it's not in your lab, it's in another lab. And since it's chemical engineering, I, I feel you can switch to biotechnology science. It might be a bit of a struggle because, of course, you have people with biotechnology background coming in as well. But trust me, once you get the professor to, and I think there's a there's a lot of funding for this course, so you're, you're in good shape. You you definitely get, you can switch and you definitely get funding. Wow. So that is uh, Indomie for that, uh, uh, the person that asked that question. So about technology yeah. and Indomie. So hot both space. chemical engineering so and technology <laughs> science, they have a lot of funding. Like, they are really yeah. lucky, guys. So if you are going as a chemical yeah. engineer or biotechnology, Lucky guys, yeah. Yeah, they are funding. Yeah, yeah. Indomie applicants. Okay. <laughs> so let me direct uh, this question to Olojo. <laughs> So, Oloja, I, I believe you are on. Yes, yeah, that's so Somebody is asking that, uh, Ali. Yeah, Ali is asking that uh, he has a BNG from 200 level through direct entry. Do I have to merge both transcripts for diploma and degree? So that's your question, Oloja. Yes, that's correct. Um, I think you have to merge both the diploma and the degree together because um, both of them, uh, what qualifies you for the degree because yeah so on that level you might feel like you've used four years in the university yeah but it matters a lot your undergraduate degree um the diploma degree matters a lot if you, when applying to schools they will always they only say it specifically that you we need the transcript of every school you have attended uh like yeah aside from af after your secondary school we need the transcript of every, you know, every school you have attended that is higher institution, whereas it has, maybe even if you have a an MBA in, you know, economics, you have any degree, as you should always, you know, attach it. It's what, you know, makes up a good profile. They know that, yes, you, this, this guy or this person has gone through this and gone through that and still want to go through this. Yeah. So I feel like you should... You, it's, it's very, very important to match them. They constitute your profile and, you know, they might be a very good advantage for you. You never can can say. That, that's majorly what it yeah. is. Thank you for that uh, response. Uh, thank you so very much. So I want to believe uh, I'm taking one or two more questions before the end of this session. So, Aroka is asking, oh, Zinzu, you are on. Thank you. So, Oloji, the question there from uh, Zinzu is for you. Uh, Oloji, can you remember Zinzu? Ah, I'm not sure. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I can remember. 
Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So, asking, um, what if you have your ND, HND, and BSC? So, yeah. yeah. And uh, so, however, you did your direct entry, anything here. So, okay. Okay, like I said earlier, it's almost the same question. You, your, both your ND, your HND, and your BSC is needed. The three of them. Yes, yeah. It, those are your transcripts. It shows the admission committee that, oh, this person has actually done a lot in the field of, you know, whatever department that you are. You have ND, you have HND, you have VSC. That's about, you know, seven years of education in that, you know, department. So it shows that, and you're still willing to further more. Yeah. It shows you're willing. It shows that you're willing, willing to further more. So that's just it. So I feel your ND, your HND, and your BSC match all of them together. That is what you are using for your application. Application. I, nice. So, like while okay. applying, you only see it there. We need all your transcripts, all your transcripts. And if if you, if you are considering that you are having maybe low GPA in one, so you want to remove it behind, no, it doesn't really matter. You, fine, low GPA might be there, but hmm. the, the the because you have the ND, the HND, and the BSC, it shows some important thing that you need to buttress on. That even the the admission committee already understands that oh, this person is you know a very very good student and is striving in this area so i feel like your in the combination of the three is good wow i think i love this response because i have uh, met quite a number of people they will come and be like ah, my only my nd result is very low i have no in ng it was when i uh, resumed my hnd that i was so serious and i have good results so i think that this very response answers it all. It's not all about what you have particularly. There are a lot of other things that you can use, you know, to boost up that very low ND result. If your HND result is fine, you have a good uh, recommendation, you know, from a very good uh, lecturer of yours. You have a good research work. In fact, the main thing that your Prospective, uh, let me say your supervisor might be looking at it. So you did even during your ND, maybe there's a particular course that you have a very good score at, maybe calculus. And you score like a very good score. They might just be looking at that score in that course or two, which hopefully you did so well. And uh, adding your HND to it and every other thing that makes you a, a better candidate. So please, it's not about the uh, dropping your ND or one of the certificates where you have a low CGPA. So just bring up all your profile, bring it up and be a better applicant. So, so I, lastly, I, okay. I want to say something. So I, 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 was, I observed that okay. in my department, we, they, are so, they are so concerned about your mathematics. Like the, the so, what my my pi is the you know is the graduate um director for the for our department so majorly what they are concerned about is your mathematics in that transcript if you are coming to the mechanical engineering department like how, how is your level of mathematics so you it's it's something that when they, when they look at your transcripts they are, they are going to check first how has this person done in the mathematics area? So imagine because you you had low low grade in other mm -hmm. courses that might not even be relevant to whatever you are applying to, but because you you've done so well in some key areas that is imagine. important to the admission committee. Uh, your your math, you have see. you have you have. They feel you, you will make a very good addition to the current research exactly so it's, it's just the way it is oh, that would be all that's good so olojo the last question is uh, equally for you and i also want ayo to comment on that question then we we'll wrap it up from there so i have uh, deborah asking this question and 
I can see this question is so important that, please, is it enough to depend on information on the school website? Please, is it enough to depend on the information on the school website? Ah, um, that is, I, I don't know, that question is very, very important. I want to, I I want to. So, uh, <laughs> enough. So I, want yeah, to so, I also want to hire immediately to also comment. So, uh, that is one of the advantage of, you know, contacting the graduate coordinator ahead before applying for that particular school. Yeah, some schools might give you all the best, like all, 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 the, like the the details on their website will be meticulous mm -hmm. enough to help you throughout your application, um, the application stuff. But some schools, you need to reach out to them to confirm that oh, I'm applying. Okay, for example, uh, there was this particular school you were trying to apply to. Uh, if not because we reach out to the graduate coordinator, you won't have known that they, they don't accept HND in that particular school. You would have you no know, just go ahead because it was not stated categorically on the website that they don't accept HND. But you have to you know ask the graduate coordinator to be sure. Oh, I am I am an HND applicant. Can I apply? This is my transcript. So oh. most of the time, that information is not only, I think, so I think that information is not available on the department website or the school website for some schools. Why some schools we stated that uh, we also welcome uh, HND applicants and all. So some schools we say it that even if you have a four-year degree, a four-year degree is what uh, our HND is equivalent to. If you have a four-year degree, then you are good to go. You can, you know, come to our department. We accept you. Why some schools don't state it there? So that is my own observation. So I don't know if Ayo has any other addition oh, to what I just said. Thank you. Then Ayo, Ayo, Mide, any addition to that? Um, actually, you've only just answered really, really well. Yeah, it's 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 not really it's not a one way street. It's like you 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 want to rely on the information you on the information you find on schools websites. But if you're not feeling what I would say is if you're not feeling confident enough, like okay, I feel there's something more I need to know, or in this area I feel okay, I can I can walk around this, but I need to be sure you can reach out to the graduate court. But usually, the information on website is enough. So, in uh, summary, please, the information on the school website, it's very, very important, very germane. And uh, it's always good to be an applicant that, you know, create the school website. In fact, take time to study the... So you know that I joined. Before you get into to your application it helps it gives you the confidence required for that application yeah. so, thank you everybody it has been a very wonderful uh, session and uh, we are also sorry for the technical hitches we experienced while the session was uh, starting it was a very serious one and in fact i was time out for several minutes before i could uh, you know get the a, a better reception then so you know join the session back and uh, olojo mubarak thank you so very much for you know making it a live today then uh, ayomide i scholar thank you so very much for you know taking your time too and uh, all the uh, persons present so, so thumbs up for you all i appreciate you guys and i believe we have a lot of things to share together thank you so very much then we will be announcing the next uh, you know date for our next uh, webinar and i think that webinar will be able to accommodate a lot of uh, questions and answer what you might even make it a question and answer session where we you know get some questions before the webinar 
then we just treat a, a little maybe a few minutes a topic for a few minutes that relates with those questions we have gotten then we come live on that session and answer several of your questions so we bring in uh, some other scholars that are currently in the us uh, canada uk to, to join us in uh, addressing some of those questions so that we can make it a very interactive and educative one thank you everyone thank you so very much for your time thank you bye bye